Uh, yes, thank you, Rachel. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, Ryan Cope. I'm the uh, demand and capacity lead uh, working for the System Analytical Intelligence Unit, uh, which is part of Nottingham, Nottinghamshire uh, ICB. And just uh, let Sergio introduce himself. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sergio Papaletra. I'm the uh, Population Health Management and Health Inequalities uh, lead. Uh, work in the System Analytics and Intelligence Unit uh, in the ICB in Nottingham, Nottinghamshire. Thanks, Sergio. Um, so Rachel invited us back uh, for today's session. Um, we actually, myself and Jack Rodber, who's our chief analyst, uh, we did a session about 12 months ago um, and we thought it'd be a good, good opportunity to kind of, um, yeah, do another huddle, uh, describe what we've been working on in the last 12 months uh, with a particular focus on um, how we've been enhancing uh, mainly our two um, business intelligence tools, uh, which are the SAIU portal uh, and uh, eHealthScope. Um, so I'm going to do a very quick uh, few slides uh, just to uh, describe the SAIU for those people um, who may not know about it, uh, but then mainly it's going to be a demonstration uh, of the of the tools. Um, in terms of questions, I think what I'm planning on doing, uh, we're going to split it into three different sections. So we'll do the first section, we'll then take some questions, uh, second section questions, and then Sergio is going to take part three uh, and we'll do the final set of questions. Great, so I will share my screen. Um, yeah, and go through. OK. So um, as I mentioned, um, we are the uh, SAIU team. Uh, we actually were established in on the 26th of July 2021. Um, so yeah, just um, quite quite a while now actually uh, that we've been kind of working together uh, of a team uh, of around uh, in total around kind of 30 35 uh, analysts uh, across uh, across the SAIU. Uh, we're split into six separate functions. Um, we've really kind of pushed uh, kind of our population health management agenda. Uh, we're going to show quite a lot of that uh, in today's session, uh, and that obviously quite links in closely with um, health inequalities. Uh, and we'll show some of the most recent dashboards that we've produced, uh, but also some of the uh, the PHM deep dives, which we kind of yeah re really kind of got into and, and really provide that intelligence uh, for our ICS system. Uh, we've also within the team, we have a demand and capacity modeling team, uh, which I lead on. Uh, we have a delivery at place team. Um, we look at workforce analytics. Uh, and the last part of this is a is, is what we've called linked data. So again, we have a data management team uh, which really help us uh, link data around uh, GP practice, uh, community data, secondary care data. Um, and that produces and helps us produce this eHealthScope, uh, which is a business intelligence tool, uh, which is kind of led by uh, Dr. Mike O'Neill, uh, who works in our ICS, uh, and through Mike, the data management team, and analysts within the SAIU, we're going to show some of the uh, PHM-based outputs uh, that we can now produce. Uh, and then the last slide before the actual demonstration, uh, just wanted to show how this kind of links in with our uh, commissioning cycle that people will be uh, aware of. So at the bottom, uh, we've kind of got more tools now around uh, PHM deep dives, uh, looking at that kind of uh, needs assessment. So kind of where are those um, health inequalities? Uh, what are those outcomes that we want to improve? Uh, and we do that in terms of a suite of dashboards, uh, but also uh, lots of reports as well. That then kind of moves on to our planning and delivery side, um, which is kind of the how we do it. Uh, that's where my team comes in around some of the capacity and planning and modelling. Uh, we've done lots of work around discharge planning uh, in the last 12 months, which I'll touch on, uh, and also lots of work around something called our system control centre dashboard, uh, again, which we'll show in this, in this session. Uh, and then that moves on then to our monitoring evaluation, um, we've also got a specific evaluation team as well. So again, that helps us, uh, particularly in that, that end part of the commissioning cycle. Um, so now it's again, just a, a very brief kind of overview of the SAIU. Uh, what I want to do is spend most of the time uh, on doing demonstration 
uh, of the, um, the actual dashboard itself. So let me just come out of that. OK, so. This is a Microsoft uh, SharePoint site and. It's actually now, as we can see, just in this top right hand corner, uh, we now have uh, over 1000 members uh, across the ICS. Um, it was kind of always this target. Let's get to 1000 members um, and now we've passed 1000 members. Um, I guess we need to set a new target, maybe 1500 members by uh, next 12 months, something like that. So lots and lots of users uh, that have signed up to the portal. Um, it's done through kind of a, an invite from, um, from a Microsoft link. Uh, so it's kind of safe and secure that it's invite only to get to the portal. Uh, but as we can see, uh, we, we've promoted it quite widely uh, across our ICS uh, and we have, we have kind of lots of interest uh, in the portal. What I'm going to go through is just uh, the different sections uh, within our portal. I will pause after about five or ten minutes, uh, take some questions, uh, and then we will go through the, the the second half of the portal. So, what we've done, um, probably a, a couple of things to mention as well. We've uh, we've had uh, Alice Beer, who you may recognise there. Um, we had the, the ITN news crew uh, came in, did a bit, did a bit of filming. Uh, kind of a spotlight on what the SAI do and the portal. Uh, that's kind of a video uh, of uh, that session. Uh, again, we've got some information around kind of our news and, and updates, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus firstly on our PHM uh, deep dives uh, and reports. So we now know that we've got kind of linked data which we use in eHealthScope. And what we want to do is use that data and turn it into intelligence that we can share uh, with our system. And what we do is actually link in with something known as our clinical design authority. Uh, and we kind of hold workshops where we produce reports and we will share that within workshops with our clinicians uh, and then create action plans uh, to kind of drive forward actions based on the data and intelligence that's been produced by our team. Um, so there was lots of work around uh, lung cancer deep dive. We done ones around kind of around COPD. That was last year. Uh, we also did a big one around fuel poverty as well. Um, again, I got some re national recognition around our fuel poverty deep dive. But the one I'm just going to pop into, which is the latest one, is the cardiovascular disease deep dive. So. As you can see, we had, we had a number of those around AF, CVD, uh, heart failure. Uh, just opened up the heart failure one. And within that, we cover, and I'll not show you the paper, it's a, it's a 62 page plus pack. Uh, but within the table of contents, you can see the types of information we're covering. So we're covering the risk factors. Uh, there's a summary of key findings. Uh, and then importantly, we also cover all of the uh, evidence based interventions as well. Um, within the appendix, uh, we've got all of the links to our evidence based interventions. Uh, but within the deep dive pack, we, we do have a summary uh, of the, the key messages from that. Uh, we then look into profiling the population with AF. Uh, and we do that in a number of different ways, as can be seen on screen. Uh, and we then do some uh, logistic regression analysis on that uh, and Sergio is going to show some of that later on uh, but again that will look at some of those risk factors uh, and the likelihood of uh, heart failure uh, using some odds ratios uh, and then we also link in with as I mentioned some of that primary care data such as GP prescribing uh, regular reviews etc uh, etc et so this is an example of our deep dive pack as I say it's, it's lots of information it will take me a while to go through, but I just wanted to show the uh, basically the contents page. That's our deep dive reports. Um, as I mentioned, big sections on that, and it's all on the portal and can just be used uh, at any time. Uh, people can go into the portal and they can read in their own time each of our PHM deep dives. We've then got uh, below each of our deep dives, we've actually got uh, our system information dashboards, uh, which we call our SIDS. Now, 
we now have a total of uh, 18 system information dashboards. Uh, the latest one being a, a PHM outcomes. Um, and I think in the last 12 months, we've really kind of moved forward with uh, looking at outcomes. Um, we've still got all of the information around kind of activity trends and, and uh, a lot of the things we do around tracking secondary care uh, and primary care activity. Uh, but again, we've really kind of pushed forward around some of those outcomes. Uh, and it's kind of embedded in our PHM outcomes dashboard. Uh, it's embedded in our health and equalities dashboard. Uh, it's also embedded in uh, a lot of the other dashboards, such as our primary care networks dashboard as well. So I'll just click on our primary care networks dashboard and we'll just we'll launch that one. Um, so we have a, a Power BI license across the system. Um, it's kind of, um, it means that we have lots of users of Power BI. Uh, everyone in the SIU has been trained uh, to use Power BI uh, and we have kind of set uh, templates as well. Um, so that allows us to have a similar look and feel uh, across all of our dashboards. Um, and also the, the contents of each dashboard is, um, yeah, kind of very, very similar. Uh, as we go through them. So what we can see within our primary care dashboard is we've got um, information around the population, uh, around quaff, uh, around long-term conditions, uh, some information around um, PCN quality metrics, such as flu vaccinations, for ex example. Uh, and again, we can go into any of these sections and we will have the information uh, around each of these indicators. So, for example, uh, we've got a learning disability health check one that's on screen at the moment, uh, and obviously we can track um, the the progress uh, around those around those checks. Uh, again, we can do a similar thing for kind of our vaccination rates, uh, and again we can track our vaccination rates uh, across the system. Uh, this is currently at our place-based partnership level. Uh, we could also drill down to uh, PCN level uh, and also practice level if we wanted to. Um, and in nearly all of our dashboards, we have this uh, ability to drill down uh, to the place uh, that you are interested in. So if you're just interested in looking at mid knots, uh, you can just filter uh, into mid knots. Uh, so again, within each of these dashboards, uh, it allows us to go back to the contents page uh, and have a look at a lot of the information uh, that's currently in there. So, so I come out of the primary care network one. I just want to also show you um, one that again is pretty new, uh, which is our system control centre dashboard. Um, so in autumn, winter last year, there was a big push to create a, a system control centre, which was kind of a single area where people could see system pressures, uh, be that um, in ambulance trusts, uh, ED front door, uh, maybe in the discharge pathway, for example. So again, what we've been able to do is create a system control center dashboard uh, that allows you to see real time information. I say real time, it's about between 15 and 30 minutes um, out of date, but um, as you can see, that, that would be uh, no problem, really. So what we can see in these kind of things is kind of an example of our uh, OPAL status across each organisation. So again, you would be able to look at uh, where the main pressures are across the system. That's currently at Bassett Law Hospital uh, and our mental health trusts. Um, you would be able to look at um, some metrics around uh, ambulances. Uh, so that would include uh, where we've got 30 minute ambulance handover delays uh, and where we've got 60 minute ambulance handover delays. Uh, as you can see, the, the latest data was refreshed um, today uh, at 11 o'clock. And you can also look at information such as the, the discharge pathway. So we take, uh, again, real time information from our transfer of care hubs. Uh, and again, it allows us to see uh, within each of our transfer of care hubs, uh, how many people are medically safe for transfer, uh, but are still within the hospital. 
so again, it gives us that real time information around um, EMAS, front door, people in hospital, and also towards that kind of discharge uh, discharge pathway. Uh, just to mention, this is identical to the information that also gets sent to Shrewd. So uh, for those uh, ICSs who use uh, Shrewd for a Midlands region, uh, what we've done is take that information and just create our own local dashboard uh, that, that resides uh, within our portal. So we've covered the deep dives. I know I'm going very quickly on this, but we've covered the deep dives. We've covered a couple of our dashboards. What's also important is that we do our system intelligence reports. So what we're doing is taking the information from our dashboards, uh, writing it into uh, monthly reports, uh, and then presenting that at the, the, the right committees where, where that will get discussed. So what use discharges, for example, we have a number of uh, discharge system intelligence reports. Let's do the newest one first. And within that, again, anybody in the system can go and read about our latest system intelligence report around discharges. Uh, and it links very closely in with uh, the likes of our dashboards. So a lot of the information included in here is taken direct from our Power BI dashboards. So that could be the latest MSFT position, MSFT delays, um, maybe the, the mean discharge time, percentage of people discharged before noon. Again, this is all included in a, um, in a system intelligence report. Uh, and as we can see, uh, we have a number of those. Um, we could check that one. A number of those for certain committees where each of these areas as a committee and the SIU, ICIU will produce a report uh, for that committee. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause there and I'm going to take any questions around the portal itself, the dashboards or the uh, system intelligence reports or, or the PHM deep dives. I'll just unshare and then maybe Rachel is a yeah, so we've got. I will share my. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Um, there's a, there's a few questions. Some of them were, I guess, written earlier on in your presentation. You might have answered them already. Let me just share my screen so you can, you can pick the easy ones as as opposed to me selecting <laughs> the, the hardest ones. So here we go. Here we go. Um, so um, I'll let you um, pick pick the ones that you want to respond to. Um. I think eHealthscope one, I think the fact that a, yeah, a GP leads it make, makes it yeah, really, really powerful um, mm -hmm. that, that we're linking and also that we're linking in with the Clinical Design Authority. Uh, I think that link between clinician and analyst um, make, makes it a really powerful system. OK, OK, I tell you what, I'm, I'm asking you to select them and look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm clicking on the ones <laughs> that <laughs> are sub subliminally. Um, you can access the system. so. <clears throat> literally anyone who we invite okay. so we we promote we promote it across the ICS and that's local authorities public health uh all the acutes all of our system providers um we, we demo that to uh, various people in the system uh, and as long as they're Nottingham and Nottinghamshire uh, and they work in health or social care then we will send them an invite and then that invite allows them uh, access to our portal I suppose uh, what I was wondering Sorry, just following on from that is is um, so can anyone see like a report which isn't um, sort of confidential in any way? Would it be so anyone outside of um, Notts and Nottingham? Would that be feasible or is that just not really what, your approach to this? Yes, yeah, so currently it's invite only. Um, if, if there was a valid reason for people to um, look at our portal, then then yes, we, we could invite external people. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is based on kind of a Microsoft authentication uh, okay. way of getting into the portal. Um, but obviously, we, we just want to mainly keep it to, to Nottingham and Nottinghamshire colleagues. Sure, sure. I suppose it's just sort of, uh, it feels to me very much like best practice and, you know, people would be intrigued and interested to to learn to learn from your, your approach. Um, Okay, so this, this, this other one here says, 
uh, these the, the PHM deep dives they look sort of comprehensive um, they, they look time consuming so someone's so saying um, how long in fact do they do they take to produce well I'll let Sergio answer that one because he's the PHM <laughs> deep dive master is he <laughs> Sergio how long yes, does it take ta how long did they take <laughs> it, it varies it varies okay. you know uh, I would say at least uh, a three months working on yeah. um on a deep dive it takes at least three months mm -hmm. but initially it was just me now i've got um two more colleagues that can help and okay. um although we are obviously diversifying our portfolio but generally the minimum is three months and then depends on the deep dive some deep dives are really complex and they take and, and take longer to do Sure. And I suppose once you've done that sort of initial um, deep dive, the updating of that is is going to be something which just takes um, is, is much quicker to do. Um, so I just so the, the other part of this question was um, this is quite a big question, actually. Are they having the desired impact, Sergio? <laughs> is it all worth it? Um, well, what we realise that um, it's really important uh, uh, to to communicate our findings. So what what we do is that we go out to uh, committees, uh, groups, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, PCN meetings, uh, place-based meetings, and we we share the results, we share our findings, so that you know people are a bit more aware, um, and then generally. It's uh, it's a matter of identifying one or two things to do, to do differently or to do better, rather than um, just overwhelm people with loads of uh, issues and problems and, uh, yeah. and and not finding any solutions. But increasingly, we are now linking the deep dives to the work of um, the uh, clinical uh, designing authority, as, as Ryan said, you know, mm -hmm. which is a group of clinicians across the system sit together and then try to then um, come up with um, a, way, a way forward, some mm -hmm. actions, you know, okay. some Great. key priorities. That makes uh, that makes a, a lot of sense. Uh, the fact that it's um, something that you produce and it, it's not a, a passive um, process whereby you um, uh, anticipate people going and getting this information, which some will, but going out to people to share it with them to have have more impact um, is 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 clearly going to have more of an effect and develop those relationships as well, raising raising awareness of all of these important issues. Um, so. So yeah, I'm not sure how long uh, the rest yeah. of your presentation is. So should we just pick two more questions? So I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you pick two more. Yeah, I was going to do the Power BI license questions and then I'll, okay. I'll okay. come back on. So so we do have a, um, a premium license for Power BI. Um, now within that, I think we have a number of pro licenses. So, so we have a premium license where basically we've got unlimited people can go onto the dashboards and, and we use that as an ICS. Um, and then we have a, basically a number of SAIU people have a specific pro license where uh, we're, we're, we're using to kind of build the dashboards and then um, upload them onto the portal. OK, that, that's really helpful. As you can see, there are absolutely loads of questions. And uh, so this is generating a lot of interest. Um, for example, someone is saying here, uh, how did you get time to set this up against the conveyor belt of information production? Because um, and I think that is it's a really important question. And there could be a whole session just alone on that, on uh, on the approach that you have there to um, allocating people in time to more strategic analysis and sort of um, and generating this type of information. It was prioritised, it was agreed, it was prioritised and, and so on as part of sort of a broader in intelligence function, I, I think there. But I'm just thinking, um, I hope that was the answer because I'm, I'm going to move on without actually giving the opportunity to, to contest that at all. What I would say is to everybody who's sort of commented here, um, I will share these points these questions with you after Ryan and Sergio that's okay um, and if you'd be so kind as to sort of give some 
uh, feedback against each of these. I know it's giving you more work to do and you've already come here, which is brilliant. Um, but, but I think just uh, sh showing how people are very interested in what you've done, your approach and how you've done it. I'd be, I think that they'd very much appreciate if you could if you could sort of respond to these points. OK, so on that, I'm going to hand back to you to do the next two, two parts of your um, two parts of your session. OK, uh, thank you. Um, and again, I'm in read the questions. I'll try to I'll maybe try and answer some of those as we um, okay, go through sure. the, the next couple of parts. Uh, I'm probably going to do part two. I'll try and do it in five minutes. because I want to give Sergio um, plenty of time as well. <laughs> okay. OK, so the other thing I wanted to mention around our portal is uh, so we talked a lot about um, how, how it's being used by um, customers. So, so we have a thousand members. Uh, and how they use it. What we also wanted to do is make the portal work for us as a team of analysts uh, within the SEIU. Um, so what we've done is, is a couple of things to help uh, improve how we use it uh, in the SEIU. Uh, and that's mainly in two areas. One was to uh, embed it as part of our uh, analyst development program. Uh, and secondly, it was to use it to actually try to uh, organize and prioritize uh, our our work plan and, and our data requests and um, so on the back of the question about how can we do it as well as our normal kind of business as usual what we're trying to do is actually embed our business as usual in this work so uh, if you can manage to do that then you're kind of developing and doing BAU at the same time which still takes a lot of time but if you can try to embed um, the BAU work in the portal and in the dashboards, uh, then over that long period of time, as we mentioned, we've, we've formed in summer 2021. So over that kind of two and a bit year period, uh, things do improve um, kind of uh, incrementally over time. So as part of the analyst development programme, uh, what we've got is a, a link to a number of Midlands and national training sources. Uh, resources. Um, so lots of people will recognise these and, and be members um, and, and part of these uh, training resources. Uh, but we've also started to create our own local training sessions. So the three areas that we've focused on in the last 12 months uh, have been Power BI training. So everyone in the SEIU uh, can use the dashboards and can develop the dashboards. Uh, we've developed our training sessions, which allows people to create uh, those data pipelines, which, which helps automate things a lot more, which again helps with uh, freeing up time uh, around development. And we've also got eHealthscope training, uh, and Sergio is going to uh, touch on um, eHealthscope in a second. So uh, within each of these areas, uh, we have um, quite uh, a lot of information around Power BI. Uh, the training is carried out by members uh, of our team uh, and we also drop in the uh, resources as well. That includes our Power BI template, so we have a similar look and feel for all of our dashboards, uh, a presentation on how uh, you can use DAX uh, and also uh, a dummy data set to help people uh, kind of try out uh, building their own dashboard. Uh, and then currently we have five um, different uh, recorded training sessions uh, around entering data, uh, using Power Query, uh, visualizations, using DAX, using bookmarks. So again, really kind of useful resource for, for our team uh, that now just sits uh, on the portal itself. Uh, and we have that in terms of, um, as I say, R as well, uh, and also eHealthScope. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on Oops, sorry, just uh, click that. Was our data request log just right at the bottom. So again, what we've got is again, anyone who's got access to the portal can obviously uh, create a, a data request form, uh, which goes to our kind of central uh, email. And within that, uh, they can choose uh, a certain, certain function. So we've talked about PHM, demand and capacity, health inequalities, uh, and then that will obviously be assigned to one of our teams, uh, and then all of those details of the request uh, get contained within that. Uh, and then within the actual portal itself, 
So we've then got an area where we've got a, a kind of a data request log. And within the log itself, uh, I won't click on it, but within the log itself, it will have all of the uh, individual data requests uh, that have come in uh, around uh, for each of the teams. So again, as a portal, it helps us to organize our day to day work. It allows us to prioritize. It allows us to reduce duplication. Um, so again, we're just trying to use it within the SIU to make our lives easier uh, as well as um, using it as a resource for ICS members. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Sergio and then we'll take more questions at the end just to yeah, come and give Sergio some, some time. Okay, thanks, Ryan. So I'm going to um, talk a little bit about the EL scope um, in uh, Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. The EL scope is a, a web based online application which is really restricted uh, um, across the uh, health and care community in Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. And there are very, very strict uh, um, access protocols. So, for example, clinicians in a practice can actually uh, drill down to patient level data. Um, analysts across the community can, uh, can only see uh, counts or percentages or rates, you know, so aggregate figures. The HEAL scope sits on top of what we call the GP repository for clinical care, GPRCC. This is a primary care led uh, program um, led by a GP in, in Nottingham, Nottingham West, and supported by the, uh, the community, the entire community. Uh, it's a provider-led initiative, so uh, GP data is uh, uh, shared and is uh, joined with, um, uh, linked with uh, hospital data, community data, mental health data, um, uh, that uh, comes directly from from the providers uh, across the local system. The primary purpose of this initiative is direct care, so it's a system that uh, supports uh, clinicians in in uh, clinical audits, for example, um, reviewing patients and so on. It sits alongside the the, uh, the usual uh, clinical systems. And, uh, and the EL scope is the, if you like, is the front end that uh, allows uh, uh, clinicians, but um, anybody really, to visualize the information. So the uh, the business intelligence uh, function of the EL scope is only one of the many modules. So, and that's what I'm really going to show you is the kind of the analyst element, but there are, uh, many other uh, functions and modules that are used by clinicians where they actually drill down to patient level data or identify patients at risk of certain certain outcomes or um, are able to um, to target patients with certain care gaps. Okay, so this this is the profiling tool. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, no, yes, excellent. So this is the uh, the profiling tool. It's kind of the the main uh, place to visualize the uh, information we got in uh, GPRCC. It's mostly GP data, coded data, but as I said, you know, there is also linked data, hospital, social care, and community data. You got um, a number of filters uh, on this page. So you can select the default is diagnosis. They are most of these, most of the diagnosis, the topics here are uh, from uh, GP records. Uh, so they are based on nomic codes, ADHD, anxiety, asthma, CUPD. So I'm going to choose a CUPD. You can select a specific ethnic group or a specific gender. You can also look at uh, uh, the population from a registered perspective or residence perspective. You know, if I stick to register, then I can look at practices, neighborhoods, PCNs, 
place based partnerships and the overall ICS, ICB. If I choose residential, I can look at the uh, LSOA, MSOA, wards, local authority, and uh, uh, districts. You know, um, it is based on GP data, so primarily it will be our registered population in the end. And then you can select your age uh, and, other, and other filters. The default is active patients. So if I click on profile patients, uh, we'll get a number of uh, panels which are at uh, different dimensions we can uh, look at the data. So the first panel will tell me how many people with CUPD um, based on the, on the GP registers uh, are uh, on the system. Uh, 20 feet, just just over 25, well, just under 26,000. We can look at the incidents as well. So if I select all time and I update this, we can see um, uh, the number of new new diagnoses UPD over time. So you can see fluctuates, drop during COVID, and then they picked up again. We normally ignore the last the last data point because it's incomplete. Um, and then also we can look at this, this across the system, or we can look at uh, uh, also different dimensions, different uh, geographical dimensions. So ICPs you can see what, what um, how is the trend across the ICPs, you know, pretty similar across the various, uh, uh, various place-based partnership. So if I go back to, to here, uh, we can also uh, split the numbers by uh, by area, PCPs, uh, PCNs, and so on. Or we can look at the age and sex dr uh, drill down. We can see uh, COPD is a disease more prevalent in uh, in uh, older uh, older age groups. This data can be exported. There are some um, um, safeguards in place, like uh, small numbers are suppressed. And all the other numbers are rounded to the nearest multiple of five. So we'll, you, you will hardly find one or twos. You will find either zero and five, which are, uh, we, we, we found out that they are quite they are sufficient for what we uh, need to do. But that um, allow us to drill down to uh, various dimensions without the risk of identifying one or two individuals. Uh, there are a number of other panels here. Uh, we can look at different um, dimensions. Uh, people that are uh, on the end of life, people that have got annual reviews. So I'm looking at, for example, uh, deprivation. If I click on deprivation, we can then uh, stratify uh, this segment, the CUPD segment, by uh, uh, the the deprivation, the natural deprivation deciles. So when it's catching up, you can see that uh, most people uh, with UPD uh, live in the most deprived to deciles across the um, the system. And also you can look at uh, other type of uh, uh, deprivations, income decile, suspect will be a very similar picture. Okay, so um, there are, as I said, there are a number of panels here. You can stratify this information across different things. You can see the appointments, the number of appointments, and the trends of appointments for those patients. What's really new is that uh, we now got a, um, uh, sorry, before I go to the advanced mode, I just want to show you all the different topic categories. So we got, uh, I mentioned the diagnosis are diseases, but we can look at uh, a lot of different uh, um, topics. So we can look at clinical test investigations. We can look at uh, self-guarding self prevention, we can look at uh, hospital activity, uh, emergency admissions, for example, or elective admissions, our patients. We can look at end of life, QOF information, or demographic specific information. And uh, and this tool has been 
designed and created having a, a population health management uh, uh, methodology and approach, you know, the approach of uh, segmenting, stratifying the population, so so we can more easily uh, target specific uh, specific group of people. So this the high level population segmentation we've created, you know, kind of adapting uh, um, the bridges to health, uh, um, uh, OBH segmentation, healthy people with disability, low term conditions, threat and dementia, and no life organ failure. So we can we can also look at uh, those uh, population groups. The uh, something that, uh, very new is the uh, is the ability to switch to uh, between the the basic mode to the advanced mode. In the advanced mode, we can combine uh, event concepts. So if we want to look at a patient with CUPD, I select CUPD from this list. Um, there are loads of event concepts. That's the one I'm looking for, CUPD. And then we want to uh, look at patients that um, have got um, um, depression. Okay, so the quote for the depression. So, so then we start now combining and then uh, an ability that uh, usually uh, people don't really have to to start joining the C4. So, so we're looking at all people that have got CPD and also have got a diagnosis of depression. And then I'll, I'll do exactly what I've done before. And now, as you can see, from a total population of under 26,000, we've gone down to 6,185. 6, we can do exactly the same we've done for uh, all the other uh, we've done before. We can stratify this uh, subsegment into different uh, uh, dimensions, different ways. Uh, there is also a um, another way we can look at information, the cross tab functionality, which is new uh, compared to last year. So uh, we can select a um, uh, let's select uh, to start with our uh, um, ICPs, our place by base partnerships, and then let's have a look at uh, the population um, that um, have got um, the, the, the latest BMI to understand the population with uh, uh, obesity, and then we can generate the data. So we are able now to um, extract in a more dynamic way GP base data, but really any data available in GPRCC using this tool. So we can export into Excel. We've got numbers and we've got the usual safeguards to uh, remove any any possibility to identify patients. And then uh, uh, the final bit I want to show you is the uh, logistic regression tool. So if I go back to um, uh, the uh, the base uh, profiling tool, I just need to make sure we uh, we don't select any um, specific diagnosis or segment in our population. If I click on analyze patients, we got this interface that um, um, interacts with the Python uh, engine. And it, it is able to run on the fly um, a, a logistic regression model in Python. So uh, uh, our target population, sorry, um, the the overall population we are we're looking at is all active live population. Oh no, sorry, it's remember it remember this. I need to refresh. I need to. I need to go back. To uh, probably it's easier to re to refresh in this way. Just to ask Rachel, do you want us to go on a little bit longer than twelve o'clock, or? Um, 
you could go on a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, it won't take, it won't take too long. It won't take too long. Absolutely. So yeah. I've got all, all patients. So if I select diagnosis, uh, this this is going to be our uh, my target population. I select CUPD again, and then um, uh, usually the default uh, um, uh, independent variables or predictors are age, deprivation, and uh, gender. So I, I want to look at uh, um, current smoking, current smoker. And a smoker, so this will be a binary flag, yes or no, and then uh, uh, just select uh, uh, the highest level we got, uh, ICPs, we stay there, I run the model now, it might take a few minutes to run it, you know, it might not be, uh, depending on, um, um, uh, depending on whether there are other, uh, other things running on the server, Usually it doesn't take too long, no more than two, three minutes, but it will return an output, usually a forest plot with odds ratios, coffee intervals and uh, p-values. And then we can start testing hypotheses. So for example, the hypothesis here is that the smoking is strongly associated with UPD. Obviously we know that, you know, but uh, if I show the segment, um, so the population denominator, if you like, we're looking at the total population is the entire population, but our outcome measure is UPD, diagnosis UPD. So once we adjust for uh, age, sex, deprivation and everything, let's have a look whether uh, being a current smoker is associated to uh, CUPD. And indeed, you know, compared to non-current smokers, current smokers are um, almost five times more likely to be diagnosed with COPD. So we using real data, we we kind of confirm that hypothesis. Now let's look whether um and that's you know adjusting this is an adjusted or ratio, adjusted for age, sex deprivation and ethnicity as well. So is uh is um um CUPD associated with deprivation. Well, if we uh, we can exclude the uh, the non record people with our record, so it doesn't skew our coffee intervals. So compared to people living in the least deprived quintile, people in the most deprived quintile are uh, um, three three times uh, just above three times more likely to be diagnosed. So. From a statistical point, there is a strong association between uh, uh, socioeconomic deprivation and uh, CUPD. And you can see there is actually a linear association. You know, the risk of or the likelihood of CUPD increases with the increase in uh, deprivation. So this is kind of a, a tool that is available across the local community, you know, and people can test and uh, combine different outcomes with different predictors. So really, really powerful. Obviously, um, people need to understand what they're doing and understand how to interpret the results, you know, and all the limitations of uh, uh, this type of regression analysis. But it's really, it's, re it's a really useful tool. Now, I'm aware we passed the, uh, the hour. I just want to leave uh, the last few minutes people got available for any questions, any final questions they have. OK, so there were there were a couple more questions that people have asked, um, so I won't, I won't share my screen. Um, thank you very much for that, by the way. And so people are sort of moving away now to to their to their sort of their lunch break um, or, or the meeting. So thank, thank you very, very much for that. One question was around uh, they thought the number suppression was under seven or seven or under, not five. or under. <laughs> I thought it was five, but it could have changed. Um, uh, that was one point, um, and then and, and there's, there's, there's several more uh, questions about GP data. Um, in fact, um, are all, were all of the GP practices signed up? Is everybody signed up? Is it 100% of data? 100% sign up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, that's and that's because it's a primary care led, you know, initiative. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's very much in their interest. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I think the, I, what I will do is share the rest of the, the points and the questions which, which people have raised with you, as I, as I mentioned before. And if you'd be so kind as to respond to some of those, people are very, very interested and you've obviously achieved a great deal there. Um, somebody did mention what you've just mentioned about the interpretation of some of this information. Very, very powerful. You can see it's, you know, it's clear uh, and very, very sort of meaningful, but also needs needs to sort of have that. Uh, understanding that that goes with it. Um, uh, and Andrew's just said in in the comments. He said it's uh, more very impressive. And so then, and thank th thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much for coming today. Uh, as I as I said in the um, in the preamble, this was um, this, this this was requested. People wanted to see more. See what see what you're getting up to over there. It's been a really great insight. Um, and we uh, hope to have you back again in the future. I, I've got so many. I've just got so many questions. Basically, I'm just going to have to catch up with you outside of the meeting um, at, at another point. So thanks again for coming and um, enjoy the rest of your day. And to everybody else, thanks for coming. And I'll see you in two weeks. Thank okay. you. Thank bye you bye. Very much. Bye. 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 No